Hey guys, and welcome back to Kerbo Space Program! My name is Twitchy, and last time we made ourselves a million monies going around the moon by rescuing Kerbals and repairing satellites. This time I'm hoping that we can have a similar display of gaming excellence as we set our sights on Minmus and hope that we can actually get all the science of this minty destination of wonder. Once again, my name is Twitchy. And welcome to my final career. Every mission must start with a vehicle and that vehicle is assembled in the vehicle assembly building. The clue is in the name after all. Though I have to be honest with you, that is a bit of a videographic lie. Most missions actually start off in the mission control to see how we can pay for said mission. But I have a look at the analytics on the past eight episodes. Nobody watches that. So we're going to skip on straight into the vehicle assembly building here. I am trying to create a vehicle that will take Bob Kerman all the way around Minmus. I have two objectives here. One is just to get to Minmus and get back. We've done it before we can do it again that is not going to be an issue but the second one is to explore our smallest moon when we get there the ideal way of putting a single kerbal onto a rover type device when you get to anybody is of course with the external command seat i unfortunately am missing that technology so i'm trying to figure out other ways of doing this and i think probably the most reliable method we have of attaching a kerbal to the outside of a craft is of course the mobility enhancer otherwise known as a ladder to you and me not even the top quality ladder as no, it is just three bits of twisted metal stuck on the outside of the rocket here that Bob Kerman is going to try and hang on to. I am going to go off and do a little bit of a test of this first because, of course, this is quite new technology that could, could cause a whole bunch of troubles if it doesn't work out the way we want it to. So we're going to get Bob out, we're going to put his helmet on, and we're going to realise that actually that is far too far away for us to reach on to from this distance. It's a bit of a shame because, obviously, this will work fine on Mimus itself. Bob could get out, use his jetpack, fly up there and uh, just grab onto it but obviously we are not testing this on Minmus we are testing this on Kerbin. Kerbin where the jetpacks are not strong enough to overcome the downwards acceleration of gravity. Bit of a shame but it's just one of these things you've got to take care of whilst being a space program but as you can see we can climb up Bob there. It seems to work out fine. I turn the engine on, I pop a few things. We don't have the to weight ratio to make it over but the thing to note there is Bob did not fall off and I I'm all about that. Okay so now we need to make the craft that's going to take this one to Minmus. We've got the cell we've got ourselves the payload that we're trying to deliver to Minmus and now we need to make the booster craft that is capable of carrying both the crew and the payload all the way to Minmus. And to be able to do that we need about 4600 delta Vs. That is four and a half kilometers of change of velocity. A lot of my rocket designs at the moment seem to be using this double adapter Soyuz style twice changing of angles there. And I'm really liking the way it looks. Obviously I've just been programmed by the Russian launches for the past 20 years or however long I've been watching them and it, it's influenced me greatly. I, I love the look though. I was a bit annoying about whether to put the bigger tank on the top upper stage there, but I've actually decided no, we're going to split this job down into three separate stages. We've got the payload at the top, we've got the command module in the middle that's going to end up uh, landing and returning, and then this bottom stage that I'm working on here is going to be our get us to Minmus stage. This has got to get us out of Kerbin's atmosphere and all the way to Minmus, leaning about 4,000 delts in that particular one. Carrying on with the Russian inspiration, we've gone for a Vostok style four conicals around the outside. We can drop them down. I say four, there's actually six there. Sorry, it uh, turns out that I've forgotten how to count in my many years of playing Kerbal, but we are still struggling with the amount of Delta V that we have in there. With six of those conical stages and even with the fuel pumps leading it to a more effective fuel management, we're still not quite making it. So I throw an extra mid tank into the middle there. Give us a bit more fuel capacity while still keeping the six external tanks. With all our Delta V requirements taken care of, it's time to start putting things like docking ports around the outside of the tank so that when we have some better technology, we can come and get this piece of a potential space junk and return it to the Kerbal Space Center. Also things like safety, I suppose some parachutes would be handy if we wanted to bring the Kerbals back. A docking port for the ability to be able to get whatever it is we need. Maybe we need to refuel it. Maybe we need to uh, transfer some Kerbals around. We never know exactly what we're going to need and I always like to keep as many of my bases covered as possible. Deploying the rocket to the launch pad. I have noticed that there is something that I am not 
entirely pleased with here. If we have a look at Bob, you can see that his suit, his suit looks a little bit messed up. And I'm going to go through and explain how I fixed that here. First thing we need to do is to make our way back to the space center and go down to the bottom right and click on the button that brings up the texture replacer. First thing to do is to figure out whether you want to do a generic Kerbal or the specific Kerbals like I am. So I've selected Valentina and I've gone through and clicked the personalized suit button so that I can tell Texture Replacer to actually look for the different types of suit. I've selected Valentina's, uh, the one that I like, the future, and gone through and selected for all of my other Kerbals, the suits that I feel they should be wearing. As you can see, Bob, I need him in a future suit. I click around and find the white blue one because I believe that is the best one for the scientists. And that's it. That's, that's literally all you need to do. I had the knowledge, now you have the knowledge. Go out there and make your Kerbals look beautiful. With the rocket on the pad and the Kerbals looking sharp in their new suits, we're going to have an official naming ceremony here. This craft used to just be called Test Article 1. No more! We're going to call it the Penrose. I've been doing a lot of uh, looking into Roger Penrose's work, and so his name was in my brain. Anyway, 3, 2, 1, blast off! We are ripping into the sky at about 2 Gs right now. Seven skipper engines prepared Telling us forwards with all the thrust they can muster. Well, I say well, we're actually about half of the throttle now because I did not want to exceed those two Gs. We've got quite a wide cross-sectional area when we are punching through the atmosphere. And if we go too fast, the drag that that induces is far, far too much. Coming down onto the single skipper, though, we need to go straight back up to full throttle because the skipper, as I have said many times now, is not the main sail. And its to weight ratio on a craft this big is abysmally low. We are aiming for a parking orbit as low to the atmosphere as possible so I've put my Apple apps at around 75. I feel like this is the safe height to go and still have enough breathing room above the top of the atmosphere to be able to circularize when you get up there. This of course is the most efficient way to circularize your orbit. You uh, throw up a uh, an arc that goes up and out of the atmosphere and then when you get to the top of that arc burn your engine sideways and try and make that arc into a beautiful circle that goes around the planet. Though unfortunately as I literally just said, the skipper is not a mainsail and we have not been able to get enough speed onto our craft in a short enough amount of time that we did not end up entering the atmosphere. We are about 62 kilometers right now. That is eight kilometers into the atmosphere. That is not what you like if you want to stay into a permanent orbit. This is in fact how you deorbit stuff. You put it inside the atmosphere and the drag slows it down enough until it eventually crashes back to Kerbin. This is the beginning of a mission though and crashing back down to Kerbin is not really on the agenda. Thankfully I managed to get enough thrust going that we push our Apple apps up and out of the atmosphere and we just wait a, few, a little while for the craft to drift out of the atmosphere, make the appropriate burns at the appropriate times and get ourselves a beautifully circular orbit. Another thing that's absolutely beautiful at this point of time is where Minmus is in relation to Kerbin. Minmus has a slightly inclined orbit which means there's a cheap time to go and an expensive time to go. The cheap time to go is when Minmus is going to end up coming through Kerbin's orbit as in it's going from above it to below it or from below it to above it. Passing that line is by far the best time to get there. You could end up going when Minmus is as far away as possible from that so you have the maximum amount of up or down to go around that way. I tried to avoid that whenever possible and the way that I do that is by setting my maneuver node on the ascending or descending node depending on which one has Minmus directly opposite from it. This time we got a free Mun encounter on the way through as well. That sounds like it was great fun but trust me it does come complicate things just a little bit. As we're coming in from the backside of the Mun, we're actually going to be picking up a little bit more speed. Burning through our maneuver node here. One thing that you can note on my maneuver node indicator on the right hand side of my nav ball is that white line that shows me when my stage will run out of fuel. It's always a handy indicator to have. We slightly overcooked the maneuver there. It's not the end of the world. It does happen, but slowing down just a little bit, we can see that we are bringing our targeting nodes into line or with Minmus and we get this beautiful encounter. But all encounters have room for improvement and there are places to do so. About 90 degrees around your orbit is probably the best way to do so and I want to have a nice and close equatorial orbit. I want to be going in the prograde direction towards Minmus's uh, rotation. It just makes me feel good and I want to have a periap somewhere about 10 kilometers is the ideal one but I will take anything under 100 depending on how awkward it is to move the maneuver node around. In the middle of space absolutely no well I say absolutely, we're in between Kerbin and Minmus, but it feels like absolutely nowhere. We're, we just see stars all around us, the moon is over in the distance if we look hard, and Kerbin 
is what well, we're going to say is below us because what other directions do we have in space? We have performed our maneuver and we are headed towards Minmus for that most perfect encounter around the equator. Looks good. We're going to go ahead and do our periaps burn here, but first I think we need to get a little bit of lamp, uh, ambient light boost here because I could I couldn't even see what was going on. Coming down all the way down to our periaps, we're going to perform uh, a burn of about 100 delta Vs so that we can bring ourselves into a circular orbit. And now I'm starting to think about where we're going to land the craft. It's nice and easy to land on the flat, so I'm actually going to go for this small one right in the corner there. It shares a biome with the slightly larger one next to it, but I'm not really worried about the number of biomes we can hit with our first landing. We will be using this craft on top of it to go and get all the other biomes, but at this point in time, I'm not sure whether we will ever be returning to a Minmus. We're about to get all the science that I think we are able to get hold of, and so I'm not sure if we will ever be coming back again, but I would like to leave a future target for a future mission just in case it is something that needs to happen, and that target that I have decided will be the Greater Flats. That's on the other side of Minmus, so we don't really have to worry about it too much. With the landing site selected and an impact predicted to happen on the far side of the flats, we are just going to have a drift through time now. Taking a little moment to have a look on the inside of our craft, because, you know, we very rarely get to see the inside of these P uh, slash Vostok style uh, launchers. Using the power of Time Accelerate, we can see our landing zone right in front of us here. Always trying to choose a landing zone that is in broad daylight. When we first arrived into the system, we had an option to land our, our periaps. Unfortunately, this was on the night side of the planet. That's why I closed my orbit and came around to the other side to do this landing. Landings on low gravity planets kind of take the same form every time. You come screaming over the top of it as fast as you can, and then you nullify all that sideways velocity. You then plummet. Plummet as fast as the gravity well will allow you, as low as your nerve and courage will allow you. And then when you get closer to the floor, you accelerate yourself upwards in just a little less than the gravity's pulling you down and touchdown. Beautiful. I personally always try to aim for a landing velocity somewhere around 3 meters per second. I think this is because all of the parts can take that velocity, but of course engines and landing gear and stuff like that can take upwards of 10 meters per second. Bob Kerman out on the ladder, performing what I'm going to class as a wet rehearsal, getting out and getting access to the science probe up above there, trying to collect all the experiments and put it back inside the lander so that we know that uh, all the systems are working together. This is kind of something we just need to do to make sure that we're not going to run into problems the moment we fly away from the mothercraft. Bob has collected his data, he has reset all the experiments, and now he's got down and put all of that data inside the lander. It worked well, it worked incredibly well, much better than I thought it was going to. We're going to try and get Bob onto a ladder here, and uh, the, the craft fell over. It wasn't an ideal scenario to find myself in, but I feel that we can fix this somehow. So we go and deploy the probe from the top, and now we take a moment to realise that there was something very important that I forgot here. Looking in the top left, that's right, we have no communications with this robot craft and the KSC. That means we're going to have to perform ourselves a rescue mission. A rescue mission unlike any I have performed before. Let's do a quick load to get our mission back on its feet and let's go back to the space center. This mission is completely unprecedented, not just in this playthrough, but in all of my playthroughs ever. Thanks to the powers of the engineer now being able to move parts around, it was possible for us to send a robot to rescue a manned mission. Mind blown, I never thought we'd see this day, but here we are. The probe itself is a probe control, a battery, a SAS control, and then a docking port on, port on top. We put some solar panels around, and of course the communications array are very, very important important. Enough fuel to get it going where it needs to go, and then we need to build a booster stage for it. This, of course, is only taking a small load to Minmus, so we do the 1.2 meter tanks down the center, throw on four liquid-fueled boosters around the outside, all powered by Reliance and Swivel engines, and this is, this is it. This is ready to go. It being the small diameter craft that it is, I have no problem punching this through the atmosphere as fast as possible. In stark contrast to the last mission, where we tried to go up only pushing about 2Gs. This one, I'm just I'm just letting it go, knocking itself out as fast as it can possibly handle. I am going to punch it up there and go, try and aim for a parking orbit of about 100 kilometers. 
The staging passes with a disappointing lack of explosions. I do like it when my boosters curl right back around and explode upon themselves, but it kind of reduces a little bit of the space junk, right? I mean, they're all coming back toward the surface anyway. We deploy all the antennas to make sure that our robot can carry on having communications with the KSC at all times. I am uh, reminded that maybe I don't have the best communication network set up at this moment in time. It's all right when we're trying to communicate back with Kerbin because I've got the extra ground stations enabled, but once we get to the dark side of the moon or the dark side of Minmus, we are going to have a little bit of problems uh, there. Circularization happens uh, wonderfully and uh, selecting a Minmus as our target, we can see that uh, the other scenario that I was talking about has arisen. We are not going to be arriving at Minmus when it is passing through the ascending or descending node. I'm going to have to take a little bit of time to put down a second maneuver at the ascending node on the other side, bring down my inclination to match with Minmus. Whilst we watch this robo rescue craft make its way up the Kerbin's gravity well on its way to Minmus, I would like to take a moment right here to thank every single one of my patrons. These names scrolling up the screen right now are the guys and girls that are keeping me focused and determined. Keep me pumping out this quality content even when my friends come up to me and go, Twitchy, would you like to join in an intercontinental bike race where we're going from Alaska down to Peru, crossing mountains, crossing swamps, going through the equator and being chased by drug barons? And I'm going to have to say no, my friends. I can't. I have a mission in life. I need to produce these videos for everyone out on the internet, but more specifically for these patrons who are supporting me in these very tough times. So I hope you will join me in thanking them as we come into orbit around Minmus. The circularization burn has been performed and we are looking at a nighttime landing. I'm not about that. We are going to time warp our way into the future to put the landing site, that is the mothership over there, into the daylight. Doing a quick change of trajectory, just I know where I need to burn. I need to slow down and I need to try and get my orbit going north. So I point in between the retrograde and the normal vector. The rotation of Minmus is a little bit of a confounding factor there but if I switch my nav ball to surface mode, I'm able to use the speed indicator there and it stays relative to the surface, funnily enough, as it, as it indicates there, meaning that I can make a much more accurate prediction about where I'm going to land. Having a visual cue on my landing site down there is one of the reasons why I like to have the flats as a landing site because it's, it's so hard to miss. I would have to be very hard pressed to be like, I'm sorry, I don't know where I'm headed because it's a totally different color from all the others. One once again, absolutely nullifying any of my horizontal speed, or at least as much as I think will take me too far away, and dropping down with the maximum velocity that I think Minmus can impart upon me. I could turn around, point down, and fly it down. Uh, that, I think, is just a bit too risky of a maneuver. As we enjoy... The explosions, beautiful. I can see the shadow of my target just over there on the flats. And of course, I've been having a little bit of trouble recently where I've lost the outbounding box. Landstrider, the absolute legend, has come through and told me that F4 is the key to get that back up. Absolutely amazing. My thanks go out to you in a big way. I was struggling with that and you know I was. <laughs> The general plan for trying to land close to somewhere where you've already been before is just to get your orbit somewhere close and then drift towards them and then don't try and go faster towards or slow down at any point. Just burn radially upwards until you're floating in the right spot and then perform like another landing. The touchdown happened was so smooth, just like butter. Both of the craft have been left standing totally upright. Bill Kerman getting out and trying to figure out where he's going to place these antennas. Unfortunately, they're too big for him to carry, but I do seem to be able to move them all the way down. I then stand Bill in between the two craft and I'm astounded at the reach that this Kerbal has. That's, that's hundreds of meters he can pass that back and forwards. That is amazing. Unfortunately, at that such distances, the ability to place it very, very accurately is almost removed from you. So uh, I, I came across, stood on the side of the rocket and then used my proximity there to be able to put the communication devices exactly where I needed them. Bob Kerman, scientist of the moment and the absolute hero of this Kerbal Space Program career mode, it has to be said. He has taken up his position on the side of the science probe. The preparations are under way we need to deploy the antenna we need to make sure we've got fuel and we need to try and not blow up the mothership with unplanned thermal events otherwise i 
I toasted it with the rocket engine. New procedures are being learned. We're going to actually use a decoupler this time to throw the probe up in the air. Uh, unfortunate side effect of throwing the mothership on its side, but Bob Kerman is loose and away. The trajectory is being targeted right now. We are headed for the poles of Minmus. But I'm afraid with that, I am going to have to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I have run out of time today for this episode, and we are going to leave Bob Kerman hanging, hanging on the side of a ladder as a space probe hurtles its way up to the most northern point of the tiny, tiny moon of Minmus. I will see you guys next time when we are going to conclude this mission by hop, skipping and jumping our entire way across Minmus using the ScanSat maps to their fullest. My name's been Twitchy and I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye.